Hey everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to NTD Racing. This here is Lefty. And this is pretty much what it looks like after washing up. We just finished 1,200 miles of the Baja 1000 and it was, we've been through four Baja 1000s and this was the most grueling. It was amazingly difficult. Uh, and this truck finished 1,200 miles, which was the race distance. We just didn't do it in time to get a qualifying time. But it says something for this truck, considering that uh, we built it and finished it just right before the race. So it really wasn't much tested before uh, we got here. I always say that if I build something that doesn't work or fails or something like that, I'll be the first one to tell you. And so I know there were guys who were asking me questions about my steering system. And I just want to make sure that I tell you exactly what I thought were the weak points of our steering system. Let me start with the good points first. And I have videos that show you exactly how I built this thing. This is called the slider. And the benefit of the slider is it allows me to use the old stock uh, uh, Silverado 2500 HD steering box and I make my own pitman arm and through a tie rod, I, I connect to this slider and this slider goes back and forth and hooks up both of my tie rods out to the spindles. That allows me to maintain the exact geometries that I want to use uh, so that I can have a long travel suspension and minimize the bump steer. That's the benefit of that. This slider was bulletproof. It transmitted massive amounts of loads that were from the tires all the way through and I will call this thing a, a total win. And if you're making one of these, I would make it the same way that I did. And if I was to make another one, I would make it the exact same way because the way I mounted it, it is really easy to maintain it. I can get it off. I can grease it. I can change the boots if I have to and those kinds of things. Total win there. Now, what did fail? This thing was transmitting such a large load through here in the pitman arm that it made the mount for the steering box to fail. Let me show you the old one first. Here it is over here. This is the old mount quarter inch plate steel. And you can kind of see some of the bends and some of the failures that happened here. This was cuts that I, I did to cut the whole thing out of the box. But, but if, as I kind of show you here, these are another quarter inch washers, which I was hoping to double up those holes. But what I ended up doing was I created stress concentrations too close to the edge. It allowed cracks to start and propagate across. And you can kind of see that crack continued all the way across the back of the quarter inch plate. So rule one is don't put a stress concentration or a weld anywhere where you could potentially create a crack too close to the edge, give yourself more distance. If it's a hole, you know, they kind of say, I think in the engineering world, make sure that your hole is twice the hole diameter from the side. So it should be much further over than what it is right now. And I'll show you how I fix that in the next one. What I did to double it and also kind of keep this thing from moving this way or this way is I use this piece of tubing and it used to weld right here. Well, you can kind of see this is a two inch by two inch square tube with a one eighth inch wall. And what basically happened is, is right along the whole area where it was heat affected, it sheared completely off right there. It just basically cracked and that once that crack started, it unzipped itself and completely came apart. This thing made it 1,198 miles before it completely gave up the ghost. <laughs> we were stuck two miles from the finish line. It's a funny story. Check out our video that we have on our experience at the Baja 1000. It's hilarious. Such an amazing tale of uh, not giving up and pushing this truck across the finish line. But here's how I fixed that steering box issue. So you go back and check this thing out. Uh, so what I did different, and I'll kind of, again, pull this piece over, is as this piece sat in here, it was basically on the bottom, it was welded the same as this one. But as you look at the top, you see how this one was relying on a square tube to keep it from bending this way. This one now continues all the way up to here to this part, which I kind of call my shear plate, uh, which is kind of maintaining the geometry of the top of my roll cage up here where the suspension is and where the bumper is and all those kinds of things. So that's gonna be much more rigid uh, up there. And then that square tube, I still like the square tube idea on there, so I continued that. However, this time I went to Harbor Freight and I got one of their pieces that they use to make trailer hitches. This is two and a half inch by two and a half inch with a one quarter inch wall, which is just super beefy and it's welded in there. And then if you look on the other side, if I can get the camera in here, you can kind of see this doubler plate right here. This one is much bigger. It's further away from the edge of the walls. So just in case it does start a crack or something like that, or it resists any kind of cracking. And make sure that this isn't a heat affected zone over here on the side. And this is one continuous piece as opposed to being washers. It goes all the way around. So for this bolt right here to be sheared out of there, it would have to go through three quarter inches of steel 
And so I feel like it's pretty good. And this won't be, I think, the weak point anymore uh, for this design. So uh, if you're doing something like this yourself, uh, those are the changes that I made to make this thing hopefully bulletproof. We will test it at the Mint 400, another absolutely grueling race in general. And, uh, and if something goes wrong, I'll let you know. So anyway, thanks for watching.